Hello all, my name is Cardia. Today we'll be discussing the crazy story around a little boy called Bobby Dunbar. You guys know I do my best to research accurate information and summarize it for you, but I might miss something. As always, I encourage you to have a discussion below. Tell me your opinion and theories and let me know. If I miss something, I would be more than happy to correct myself. So all people accused or suspected for these crimes are presumed innocent until proven guilty. So please be respectful in the comments and uh, with each other, and go ahead and grab your favorite snack and come join me. The Disappearance of Bobby Dunbar Imagine being a mother in 1912, your son goes missing, and then he's found. Um, you try to claim him and say, hey, it's my son, but another family has claimed it as their missing son, and now you're out of luck. You don't have the money, you can't afford a lawyer, and the court, what does they do? They actually end up giving the other family the rights to your son. That's exactly what happened to Julia Anderson. Even though I cannot specifically find that Julia Anderson was the mother of this child legitimately. I was able to find that in 2004 DNA profiling established that he was certainly not Bobby Dunbar. So what happened to the actual Bobby Dunbar? Here's some information that we gathered. So Bobby Dunbar, also known as Robert Clarence Dunbar, uh, he was born in 1908. And in August of 1912, the Dunbar family decided to take a trip. They decided to go f uh, fishing at Swayze Lake in Louisiana. On August 23rd on that same trip, I, Bobby disappeared. The police did an eight-month search and investigation where uh, somehow it led them to a gentleman by the name of William Cantwell Walters. Uh, Walters was a handyman and... Uh, he was seen around, uh, traveling around Mississippi with a boy who appeared to match the description of uh, the missing child, Bobby Dunbar. After being questioned by the police, Walters uh, said that the child was actually Charles Bruce Anderson, Julia Anderson's son. Julia Anderson had actually given Mr. Walters either temporary or permanent custody of her son for some reason. The police didn't believe him. So they arrested him and actually said, okay, we need to get the Dunbars, have them come down here and identify their son. There was a lot of newspaper articles that were done and obviously very biased, some of them, which did not help Julia Anderson's case in regards to her son. A lot of newspapers reported that uh, he shouted mommy when he saw Mrs. Dunbar. Uh, embraced her. There was a whole big movie style connection between the two. Other accounts from the same newspaper stating that as soon as uh, the little boy saw his brother, that he shouted his name, the brother's name, uh, and ran to him and hugged him and kissed him. Obviously, again, fictional from what we know now. To be fair, there's a lot of newspapers that said that there was no kind of connection between the little child and his supposed mother and there was no kind of reaction to his supposed brother which obviously you know it's a little bit of a truer statement the day after uh supposedly bobby dunbar who we know is not bobby dunbar got reconnected with his family that was not his family his mother who was bathing him um said that yep it's absolutely my son because I identified some of his moles and scars, and I am positive now that he is my son. Not only was uh, the child returned to the mother, but there was a giant parade when they went back home, whole big fanfare celebrating this child being found alive, this whole homecoming. After Walters' uh, arrest, Julia Anderson, who worked for the Walters family as a farmhand, as a field hand, she ended up going to North Carolina to support Walters and uh, let the police know that, you know, it is her son. Apprehensively, she did uh, let the police know that he was only supposed to take her boy for some reason for only a couple of days, but he had taken him for a very long time. Obviously, the newspapers were not very happy with Miss Anderson because they wanted their happy story. They um, reported, again, we don't know if this is accurate or not, that Anderson uh, was shown five different boys. 
which were approximately the same age as her supposed, which we know pretty much for sure that it is her son, including him, including her son. The child, according to the newspapers, again, showed no recognition of his mother, uh, so she wasn't sure. Again, she's been apart from him, and remember, this child is really young. So when she was given the next day the opportunity to undress the child and identify some scars and moles and to verify, like, hey, is this 100% him, she said, yes, this is absolutely my son. Unfortunately, because of the newspaper exposure and the indication that the day before she just didn't really know if it was him or he didn't really know if it was her. And of course, again, the newspaper questioning her moral character, questioning why she would, quote, abandon the child. She had three children, two of them deceased by this point. She also had those children out of wedlock, and obviously this is the 19, early 1900s. We knew how that looked to everybody. She just ended up not having enough money to really fight her claim. She tried. She tried to push the courts into determining that the boy was her son. That didn't matter either. There were residents that had seen Walters walking around with his young boy before Bobby Dunbar even had disappeared. So obviously he could not be Bobby Dunbar, but that didn't matter to the courts either. The testimonies that these neighbors and people who had seen Walters around with his young boy didn't count for anything because Walters was actually convicted of kidnapping and uh, the boy remained in the custody of the Dunbar family and lived out the rest of his life as Bobby Dunbar. Julie Anderson eventually was welcomed, at least one positive thing, into that town where the trial was being held. Uh, she was welcomed by the neighbors there. She ended up getting married and having seven children. Although According to all reports that people can find, she had a happy life, according to her children. She always regarded that uh, her child was kidnapped by the Dunbars. Walters was released after two years because, not because of any other reason, but because his lawyer said, hey, there's something wrong here, we need to revisit this. But the prosecutors decided this is gonna to be too expensive, we're just gonna release him and let him go. We don't wanna deal with the situation again. So that's what they did. They released Walters for kidnapping after two years and never tried anybody again. I think they knew in their bottom of their hearts, obviously, that this child was not Bobby Dunbar. Now the child known as Bobby Dunbar married, he had four children, and he ended up dying in 1966, not knowing that he was not Bobby Dunbar. Although there were whispers, obviously, because of the case. This whole situation came back into the light because of his granddaughter, Margaret Dunbar Cartwright, who began an investigation because of the rumors that were happening since she was really young, to figure out once and for all, she actually went through it to say, um, he is Bobby Dunbar 100% and I'm gonna prove it. Ended up that she ended up proving the opposite, that he was not Bobby Dunbar. The only information that we have in regards to what happened to the actual child, Bobby Dunbar, what Margaret thinks happened because of some type of information that's not disclosed. She believes that uh, Bobby fell into the lake when um, at the fishing trip and he was eaten by an alligator. Now, I can't find a reference where she found their information out, especially about the eaten by the alligator part, but I could see how the child could have drowned in a lake. I usually don't add my opinion into these pieces, but I was very sad to see how Julie Anderson is still portrayed to this day through different YouTubers and through different um, articles, kind of shown like as a neglectful mother. From what we can tell from this story, she worked as a field hand. She seemed very young. She had lost two children by this time, by the time that they found um, her child. And I think what she had done is maybe given Walters, Mr. Walters, her child as, as an apprentice, maybe to go visit family, I mean, we know some things say to visit family, other things say to be an apprentice to something. But she thought she was doing the right thing for her child, getting that child out to explore with somebody that she trusted because she worked for their family. And she became this vilified person 
up until that state where that trial happened, took her in with open arms and said, no, no, we believe you. Come, come stay with us, which I think is amazing. But I do truly feel sorry for her because she just could not prove to anybody until obviously fairly recently that she was right all along. I hope you guys really enjoyed the information that I presented here. If you guys have any additional information to add, please do in the comments below. I'd love to hear your opinions, your theories about what happened. I really appreciate you guys listening and definitely support our sponsors. Without them, this channel would certainly not be possible. We appreciate every like, every comment. It means a lot to us. We're a really new channel and we'd love your support. So go ahead and click that like button. Comment something below. We'd love to hear from you.